Mm-hmm. Bruh, bruh. I love it, man. I love it. Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So it is Saturday, and we can kick back because we don't have a game tomorrow. We can watch and see what the Eagles do against the uh, Josh Allen-led Buffalo Bills. The Eagles, you know, I trash the Eagles. I talk a lot of smack about them and so on because, of course, we are chasing them. They are a division rival, and this is what football is all about. The, the thing I have to give the Eagles credit for, that the Eagles have not played really good football. Their defense stinks. Their defense, remember, gave up 31 points twice to the commanders. To do that, you're not that great of a defense, but be that as it may, they find ways to win. The reason, one of the things that, I, I, reasons why I started doing originally Facebook and uh, I wrote for Cover 32 for a number of years before YouTube actually took off for me, was the reason I'd started this was because the narrative on Tony Romo was that Tony Romo was a choker. That Tony Romo was the reason why the Cowboys failed. And, you know, I started looking at the numbers. And the things that you were always hearing from the ESPNs of the world and things, the narrative wasn't correct. You could go through and say, that's some bull. You honestly could go through and say, that is not the way that a system, that, that it is. You know, they would say that Tony Romo, you know, was a choker, but the reality was he had more comeback victories than anybody else at that time. So you look at that and say, it's bullshit. And we get so much of that right now. And... I will say that Dak Prescott will not get a fair trial when it comes to MVP. You get because, and maybe you've heard it so many times that you begin to believe the bullshit that they're feeding. And maybe these guys are really beginning to believe this. You know, Dan Orlowski, who was a failure as an NFL quarterback, for some reason is considered an expert, you know, a guy who was, three and 23 and literally is constantly his whole narrative is to trash Dak. Joy Taylor, of course, her whole thing is to trash Dak. And when people bring up the idea and the concept of Dak Prescott being in the conversation for MVP, they brush it aside. <laughs> Dak Prescott, he's a bus driver is what you hear on uh, first things first. He's a bus driver. I don't know too many bus driver quarterbacks that are throwing TDs the way he is down deep. You might be able to say that Brock Purdy, with the weapons and the people around him and the great offensive line, that he has been an above average bus driver. But let's be clear here the Cowboys don't have a Christian McCaffrey that's running the hell out of the football. We get good games and bad games from Tony Pollard. This team goes as Dak Prescott goes. That's the bottom line. They are asking everything of Dak Prescott. I don't know that they're asking everything from Brock Purdy. But be that as it may, Brock Purdy is having an incredible beginning of a career with a great team around him. You cannot look at San Francisco and say that they're garbage. You could probably take any number of quarterbacks and put them into that system, except for Trey Lance, and they would be successful. They got a great coach. They got great players. They got a great offensive line. You got a great offensive line and a great running back, arguably the best running back in football. It's a little easier job for the quarterback. So when you start talking about MVP, MVP odds right now, Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott have the same odds. But the perception is Dak Prescott isn't even a top 10 quarterback. We were listening to talking heads that literally said that Dak Prescott was not a top 15 quarterback in some minds. And they focused in on interceptions that Dak Prescott, regardless of the Cowboys being the number one scoring offense, they focused in like a laser that Dak, but the Cowboys will never win with Dak Prescott turning on the ball. Oh, he sucks. At it, right? 
But now he's not leading interceptions. Nobody cares about interceptions. So what I want to do, because like I said, when we start talking about MVP, I don't know that he's going to get a fair trial because of the perception. Because basically, more than anything else, it's a popularity contest. So I want to look at a few things here. And this, uh, and again, I don't know. There's still six games to play for Dak Prescott. There's a lot of football. And for those out there that say, well, you know, he chokes in the playoffs, MVP is a regular season award. It's not about the playoffs. But be that as it may, we have Brock Purdy, who Dak Prescott is tied with as far as odds. They both played 11 games. They both have identical records at 8-3. and three. Um, Their completion percentage, and, you know, it was funny because dude on uh, first things first, he said, yo, Brock Purdy is, you know, beats him in, in completion percentage by two-tenths of a point. That's it. Dak Prescott's beating him in yards, you know, but, you know, minor yards. Yard average. Now, Brock Purdy, it's 9.4 per pass. But I will say that part of the reason why it's so high is the weapons that he has. Christian McCaffrey on screens is getting 10, 15 yards. Debo, yards after contact for San Francisco is through the roof. I remember one game early this season where, you know, Brock Purdy had 321 yards passing, but 201 yards of it was yards after catch. The players are making plays and making these numbers skewed, but be that as it may. Um, passing yards per game, Dak has slightly more. Uh, TD passes, Dak has four more than, than Brock Purdy. Interceptions are identical. Rating, Brock Purdy has a higher rating. You know, I'll give you that. Um, but and, and they both have the same amount of rushing TDs. So at worst case, you could look at that and say, they're tied. They're tied. Uh, you know, Dak's got him a couple. He's got, But there's no major difference. And these two are kind of the outliers in that. And if we look at... Dak Prescott versus Tua. Tua, of course, is you know is rated higher. Tua had, by the way, two interceptions yesterday. Both of these players have eleven games. So to say that Dak Prescott is ass ass, they both have eight and three records. And you can say, well, Dak hasn't beaten any teams with a winning record. Technically, he did with the Jets, but be that as it may, and the Chargers were at five hundred when we beat them. But you can say the same thing about Tua and Crew that haven't beaten a team with the winning record either. So Dak's got a slightly higher completion percentage. Tua has a higher yard per average. But again, when you got Tariq Hill, who's making serious bank after completion, um, you have to look at that and say, you know, it's also a product of his players. Touchdown passes. Dak has one more. Interceptions. Tua has four more than Dak does. Rating. Dak has a higher rating. And also, you have to put in that Dak Prescott also has two touchdowns rushing. Tua has none. So we're looking at Dak having three more touchdowns, and all the other numbers are right there together. And the Cowboys, I think, right now have the number one scoring off. I may be wrong with that. It's close. It's close. We're, we're basically neck and neck as far as scoring offense goes. So you could make an argument that Tua – is the better quarterback, but you can also make the argument that Dak Prescott is more deserving of the MVP. It's not any difference. I don't see where there's this chasm that you're getting from the talking heads. Let's look at Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Identical records, right? Identical. Eight and three. Both of them had 11 games. Look at the numbers. Completion percentage, Dak's a little higher. Passing yards, Dak's about 500 yards. Yard average, 8.1, 7.9, close. Yards passing a game, Dak's got like 45 more. Uh, interceptions, Dak's got one more than Lamar. Rating, Dak's got a higher rating. Rushing yard, I mean rushing TDs. I'm sorry, t uh, TD passes. Where's the TD passes? Oh, TD passes. Dak has almost twice. Twice the TD passes of Lamar. Twice. Now, Lamar does have three more rushing touchdowns. But looking at these numbers, how are you saying that Lamar is more valuable 
than Dak Prescott. I mean, I'm I'm asking for a friend. The perception is is Lamar Jackson is you know uh, head and shoulders above, and you know if we even put in postseason, most seasons Lamar Jackson doesn't make it to the postseason because he's injured, and his playoff record is worse than Dak's. So, I'm asking for a friend. How do you have better MVP odds in comparison? I, seriously, and this is where I say you don't get a fair answer. And I'm not saying that Dak is head and shoulders above that. I am not at all. There's still games to play. But this idea that Dak can't even be in the conversation, is it wins? Because so far, none of those guys have any more wins than Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Is it statistics? He's right there with all of them and beating them in many categories. So what is it? What is the reason? Because now here we have the cover boy for Madden, Josh Allen. They both played 11 games. Cowboys, 8-3. and three. Josh Allen, 6-5. and five. Completion percentage, Dak's got it. Yardage, Dak's got it. Passing yards per play, Dak's got it. Yards per game, Dak's got it. TD passes, Dak's got it. Interceptions, Josh Allen doubles Dak Prescott. Rating, Dak is 10, 10 points higher than Josh Allen. The only area that you'll get and say, well, Josh Allen is balling, is TD rushes. He's got seven, Dak's got two. And finally, my homeboy. Now, my homeboy has one game less than the Cowboys. They got to play tomorrow. But right now, they both have three losses, right? And I know, how dare you compare? I'm talking about this year right now, today, where we stand. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. We're looking at this as a single entity. Pat Mahomes, boys, 7-3 record. Uh, completion percentage, Dak's higher by three. Yardage. Dak Prescott's thrown for more yardage than Pat Mahomes. Dak Prescott has a full yard more completion than Pat Mahomes. Dak Prescott, five yards more per game. Dak Prescott, four more TD passes. Now, again, he's got another game to go. He may go ahead and get four TD passes. He may have a monster game that raises up his completion percentages and stuff. Interceptions. He's got nine interceptions to Dak six. His rating, his rating is 14 points lower than Dak Prescott's. So, and Dak Prescott's got two rushing touchdowns to his zero. So, I'm not going to say that Dak Prescott and his career is better than Pat Mahomes. But if you're comparing the numbers and the records and all that, Dak Prescott's having a better season. And there's no way in the world that you can look at what the Cowboys are doing. It, it would be different if the Cowboys were uh, three and eight. If you were three and eight and you had these numbers, you'd say, okay, yeah, that's garbage time and all. Okay, I get that. You got to at least be in the conversation. But I don't think that he's going to get a fair shake in the trial of MVP. I, I just don't because of the perception and the bullshit that you get. Unfortunately, being the quarterback of America's team, where you are seen, and Lord knows that that Thanksgiving Day game was, I think, the biggest game non-Super Bowl in forever. You bring in the you bring in the fans, and you also bring in the scrutiny. Let's see what my man Dan Dan the Man Arlowski has this time. Cowboys last whatever five six games they played. I mean, I mean, the first thing you're seeing is confidence. I think secondly, you're seeing that Dak Prescott is willing to use his legs, willing to create time in the pocket, which he hasn't been comfortable doing since his lower body injury a few years back. And then you think about the fact that they've now decided to target C.D. Lamb, treat him as a number one, as Dan Orlovsky asked for weeks ago. But then you're seeing the other guys come along. The first pass early on in the game, it was about Michael Gallup. It was about Jake Ferguson. We saw Brandon Cooks get involved. And then 
that allowed C.D. Lamb to get involved in the game more organically. And now with Dak Prescott playing at such a high level, the defense can do what it does best, which is pin its ears back, rush the quarterback, and also create turnovers. But it still doesn't matter until we see this happen in a big game, until we see who Dak Prescott and his offense can be in critical situational football moments. Yes, he played amazing against the Philadelphia Eagles, but it was late in that game with he and Mike McCartney with time management, making the right decisions, putting this team in the right place to execute. We know that they can score points. We know that Dak Prescott can play top tier football at the quarterback position. But is it going to matter and is it going to count when you play the best teams in the most important moments? Mike T, you think they've actually shown something during this stretch that makes you more confident going forward when they do play those good teams again? Yeah, absolutely. It's how do they get better from within? It's young tight ends like Luke Schoomaker, Jake Ferguson. What's remarkable is a year ago we were talking about is it Jalen Tolbert, is it Michael Gallup? Those guys are actually afterthoughts, guys. Ten different Cowboys caught passes yesterday. They are much more diverse on offense than they've been. And then on the other side of the ball, they overcame some big injuries. We've already talked about Deron Bland and Marquise mm -hmm. Bell. But going back to offense here, that seam route to Jake Ferguson. Great throw. Yeah, that's better than what Dalton Schultz could have done. They're getting better at the tight end position. Mm -hmm. And outside, again, they have a lot more volume than they've had in the past. A very good performance by Dallas Cowboys. I love the toss plays in their run game. Dak threw the ball downfield well. RC, you talk about his eyes. I think the... The, or excuse me, his legs, I think the best part of it is it's not just running. It's running and trying to go create mm. big plays, you know, with his eyes downfield. And I think that's kind of the thing that I've certainly lost sight of. Like this, first of all, great block by Tony Pollard. Climbs outside the left of his pocket. Goes to throw. Nope, not there. All right, so that's, that's the right decision in that moment to go use your legs, keep your eyes downfield. Escapes to the right of the pocket. Now, watch how his eyes stay downfield. He's not just trying to get away from bad. He's trying to go create good for their offense. Mm -hmm. Obviously a nice bounce there, but these two are awesome. Again, climb from the left side or up the left side of the pocket, eyes downfield. This ball is gonna be snapped from the 38 yard line going down inside the 10, that's 20 plus yards. And now this ball is gonna be snapped at the 15. He climbs or evades to the left. And this is an absolute rope kind of across his body as he resets for another 20 plus yards. You're talking 40 to 50 yards of offense strictly because the quarterback Got rid of the, got away from oh. bad, and then went created good. Really, really good win. Really, really good win. Let's 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 have this conversation, RC, Mike T, and Dan, in the context of like the college football playoff. If if the Cowboys, if we were doing that, it would be eye test versus resume. Because we consider and say, man, they look like a good football team. That's not surprising. They beat nobody. They beat absolutely nobody. Yep. The, the last three teams that they yeah. played against: 28th on defense, 31st on defense, 32nd on defense. So good performances, but so the like, Jets were we don't know anything different. That, uh, Dan, we're on the precipice of yeah, but this is the two months Miami beat. Go ahead, RC. No, but, but, but this is the conversation. I actually tweeted it yesterday, and then I had to remember something. I tweeted about the Miami Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys, two of the mm -hmm. best teams in all of football, yeah. or at least we believe that. Neither of those teams have beaten a good football team. Thank now, you. what Thank they do you. is they play bully ball, right? When you're playing a team that you're better than, when you're playing a team that your roster is more complete than, then you blow them out, right? And that's what gets us excited. That's what makes us feel like these teams can be teams to win a championship. But you also think about the Dallas Cowboys playing down to the Arizona Cardinals early on this year. We right. feel like they've moved past that. Like we won't see those performances anymore, but are we going to see performances that allow you to beat the Philadelphia Eagles? Are we going to see performances that allow you to beat the San Francisco 49ers? Because we have to remember that two of the losses that the Dallas Cowboys have are to two of the teams you probably have to beat right. to be a Super Bowl champion, to be yeah. an NFC champion. And so that's what we have to figure out about the Dallas Cowboys. When all the chips are on the table and it's great on great, can you be good enough? Can you execute well enough on those days to be the victor in the end? But RC, that's where I would push back a little bit because I do see greatness. I see greatness in the last two months that we're going almost on two months, guys. They've lost one game, and that was to Philadelphia literally by a handful of plays. There that you was go. a heavyweight fight, and they stood toe to toe with the Eagles. <laughs> on the road. And they're going to get them in yeah. Dallas, and, and this Dallas Damn Cowboy up. team is better. Damn, we got. We're also oh. going on an RC, entire RC. season where the Philadelphia Eagles have only lost one game. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, right. the, the San Francisco 49ers have never lost a game whole since Brock Purdy has been the quarterback. 
Right. And so I understand what you're saying. It's it's we're grading the Dallas Cowboys against the Dallas Cowboys. You are now better than what the Dallas Cowboys used to be. We are now more confident in you than we used to be in the Dallas Cowboys. But right. the two teams that they have to play, they've already played and they've lost and they've played better over a longer period of time. And, and like we know San Francisco is a very good football team. Mm -hmm. We know Philadelphia is a very good football mm -hmm. team. We think Dallas is. And we're and I, I understand the comment of you can only play who's on your schedule. I'm, I'm All right, enough of that. One thing I did forget to do, and, and I hate to leave out Eagle fans here, and I forgot. Okay, of course, Jalen Hurts. Where you can say Jalen Hurts is ahead of Dak Prescott is the team's victories because they are 9-1 and one and the Cowboys have lost head-to-head -to, -head to them. They're nine and one. The Cowboys are eight and three. But if we look at the statistics, you got completion percentage. Dak's beating them. You look at passing yards. Dak's got five hundred more. You look at yards per average. Dak's got it. You look at yards per game. Dak's got it. You look at TD passes. Dak's got eight more. You look at interceptions. Hertz got nine. Dak's got six. You look at rating. One hundred seven point four. The only spot that you look at and say, hmm, yeah, Jalen Hurts, nine TD rushes to Dak seven. But here's where it's interesting is, even with Hurts having the nine, he's got 24 TDs to Dak's 25. So for Dak, if the Cowboys can hold serve and beat them at home, then you have to start looking at this and saying, okay, they're even – in victories there against each other, the numbers will should be what carries you forward. But then again, you know, it will be court of public opinion or sports writers' opinions, and I don't think that Dak Prescott will get a fair shake. And with that being said, we going to get out of here, we going to get to work, and we want to say again goodbye to our buddy, Rashid, on top of the world. Tell them. <laughs> Love y'all fans, y'all good, baby. Y'all back good. Tell them. Don't get on top of that blue giant thing. That girl get on top of that. <laughs> Say I'm on top of the world. Giant fans is on top. He's on top of the roof. And we got a better picture now because I'm on top of the world. And, and he's on top of the roof. He's on top of the roof. He's gonna fly off. <laughs> Be the ornament. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm getting ready to do it. All the way back home. That's right. Jazz fans on top of the roof. Uh, yeah. you know, Spam the comments, please. You know why I'm doing this? To give you guys some pleasure. Because you guys have picked horribly. So you can laugh at me because you guys still suck. Okay. <laughs> New York State Jazz fan just got on the roof of the RV for 